Today is Monday, February 1st, 2010. I will call this meeting of Norfolk <laughs> City Council to order. This is an open meeting. Posted in the corner of the building over here, corner of this room, is the actual Open Meeting Act. Posted there, certainly accessible then to all members of the public. Would you please rise with us for a moment of silence and the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we'll continue with roll call. Coy? Here. Lange? Here. Van Dyke? Reeder? Here. Wilson? Here. Brenneman? Here. Faust? Here. Saunders? Here. Under action to be taken here, I would ask for approval of the consent agenda that was included in your pack. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Moved and seconded for approval of the consent agenda. If you will please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative. As well, approval of the full agenda. Request for consent. So moved, Your Honor. Uh, I'm sorry. Request for approval. For approval. Second. Moved and seconded. Again, if you will please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative. Okay. Under special presentations tonight, the first thing I would uh, need to remind you of, nominations are now being accepted for the 2010 Edward I. Burzel Outstanding Citizen Award and will be accepted through February 28th, 2010 at the City Administrator's Office. Anything you want to add to that, Beth? Any? No, that's nothing? Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Proclamation, proclamation for February, Joy of Reading Month. If I could, I will read this in. Whereas reading is a skill that only gets better with practice and is essentially to a child's success in school. And whereas there's more to reading than homework and class assignments. And whereas there are an endless number of fun and interesting books out there waiting to be discovered. And whereas older students can use their influence to encourage younger children to read more, and whereas Norfolk's Joy or Junior Optimist Octagon International members believe they can make a difference by encouraging their peers and younger students to read more books and thus improving their reading skills, and whereas the city of Norfolk values its young service leaders and their efforts to make a difference in the community by mentoring younger readers and promoting catch and release book programs. Now therefore be it resolved that I, Sue Bookman, Mayor of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, do hereby proclaim the entire month of February 2010 as Joy of Reading Month in the City of Norfolk and encourage all citizens to take due note of this observance. Looks to me like we have a group that's here. If you want to come forward, we certainly will present the proclamation. Give you our thanks for your efforts here. I'm going to bet you're all Joy Club members. Yes. Probably have had opportunity to meet some of you before. You are Haley, Haley, and you are Katrina, Riley, Wilson. Riley, Kayla, Kobendi. Kayla, Courtney. Good morning. Courtney, <laughs> who's going to take the proclamation from us tonight and make sure that everybody within the Joy Club gets it? Okay. Thank you, girls, for being here. Mark, as always. Okay, next under the, on the agenda is a public hearing to amend the budget for a CDBG grant. I'm looking for Tom to come forward. I have opened the public hearing. Okay, one to your head. Hi, Tom Higginbotham here with the uh, Economic Development District. Uh, we're here to uh, have a required public hearing when we uh, amend the budgets. Uh, the public hearing notice explained the budget. Uh, we're basically reducing on the uh, 07 CR community revitalization grant, reducing the amount of acquisition from 95,000 to 75,000, and increasing, uh, adding a new activity of uh, housing rehabilitation to 60,000 to 66. 
the entire grant amount or the original grant amount stays the same. We're just allocating within activities. Uh, the purpose of this is to, uh, and then we're also going to be asking for a six month extension on this one uh, to allow the city uh, some additional time to acquire some vacant property and then to allow for the rehabilitation of three owner occupied units. Uh, the reason we're making this change is uh, these grants are on uh, timelines. And uh, it's either, you know, do something creative like this uh, to create an activity like re rehabilitation. The, the city has a huge need anyway. It's, it's, it's better to, you know, to work within your budget instead of give some money back. So that's why we're going to put some money into housing rehabilitation. Um, also on the uh, 2008 grant, uh, we're doing a budget amendment there to uh, reduce the acquisition and easements and to the demolition and then put more of the money into actual down payment assistance. And on this grant, we're also going to be asking for a nine-month extension to allow more time for the three additional homes to be built and uh, give the city a suitable time to find uh, some homeowners. Um, as, as, as always, uh, the CBG funds are benefit low to moderate income families. So the incomes that the, the families that will purchase these properties have to be at or below 80% of the area median income. And uh, we sat down, we've had quite a few meetings on these grants over the years, most recently here in the last couple months. My office, the city staff, Habitat for Humanity, and NeighborWorks, which are partners in this program. And uh, based on, you know, basic construction of a house, you know, costs are what they are. And in order to make these homes affordable to the income limits that we're subject to, we need to put more down payment assistance into these homes to bring that cost down the families at those income levels to make them more affordable. So that's why there's an increase with the 08 increasing that down payment assistance. So like I said, uh, whenever you're uh, rearranging the budget like this, it's a, it's a requirement to have a public hearing. So if there's any questions about this or anybody from the public wants to comment, uh, I'll try to answer any questions. Any questions at all, council? Anyone in the audience, any questions? Tom, seeing none. As always, we appreciate all your efforts. Thank You're a great you. partner to work with. I just Thank had one little question. Who writes these grants, grant applications? Who does that? Do you? Our office does. Your office? Yeah, on the, the CR, on the Community Revitalization Program, if we go all the way back to 2005, the state of Nebraska created this pilot program for communities above 20,000, less than 50, which was about eight communities in Nebraska. We did a strategic planning process with the citizens of Norfolk and the council and the city staff to prioritize, okay, if we go for this grant, what can we use these monies for? So then what we do as part of the membership that the city of Norfolk pays, we write these grants on behalf of Norfolk and then also administer them and all that good stuff. So, Any other questions, comments? Okay. I'll just stay up here for the next... Five, six, seven, eight items. <laughs> You're around for a while. I'm huh? around for a while. Okay. All right. Um, then we will close this public hearing, and I would ask for a motion for consideration of approval of the request for a letter to be forwarded to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development requesting the extensions as explained. Yeah, oh. basically, we're, we got a couple letters there, and uh, we're requesting the council need, whenever you're doing a contract extension, the contract is between the state of Nebraska and the city of Norfolk. So we need to request a six-month extension on the first grant of the 07 and then an additional nine on the 08. And I should mention that we, this we've all kind of had pre-approval with the state of Nebraska in our meetings with uh, my office, the city staff, and the other organizations. We've been in con constant communication with the state of Nebraska so they know what our plans are and we discuss what we want to do and can we do this, can we do that. So they've been a part of this uh, process the whole time. So we're just kind of going through the, the formalities here. Yeah, I'd move consideration. Second. There's a motion made with a second for approval of forwarding a letter as requested here by Tom, if you will please vote. So, yeah. Do do I need to since I am on the Northeast Nebraska Economic Development District Board, is I is it okay for me to vote? Yeah. Okay. All right. Please vote. 
All council persons voting in the affirmative. All right. Next is consideration of approval of forwarding a letter to the Nebraska Department of Economic Development re regarding the proposed budget amendments. As discussed? As discussed in the public hearing. Yes. Right. Any further questions? If not, I would uh, ask for a motion. Your Honor, I'll make the motion. I'll second it. Motion made and seconded to approve forwarding the letter as requested. If you will please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative. And finally, consideration of approval of the community revitalization CDBG down payment assistance housing <coughs> guidelines. So move, Your Honor. Second. There's a motion on the floor with a second. Please vote. Did you want to? Do you want to address that at all, Tom? All I was, all I was going to say is, since we're changing the activity to down payment assistance, right, with the uh, CDG dollars, that we needed some guidelines. So basically, what I did was uh, took the down payment assistance guidelines from the Metal Ridge project and tailored them to fit the CDBG program. With it, you know, they're limited to the target areas, limited to 80% LMI. But these are new, but they're specific to the community revitalization targeted area. We have a lot of faith in what you put together. There, and have huh? been reviewed by the city staff. Okay. All right. There's been a motion and a second. If you will please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative. And next we'll have a public hearing to consider an application to Nebraska Department of Economic Development under the Community Development Block Grant Program for economic development activities regarding the former Proteant plant. Again, I would open the public hearing and look to Tom for guidance here. Yeah, just uh, the, the public hearing was published in the paper and it was also in your board packet. But basically, this is the standard uh, CDBG, Community Development Block Grant, Economic Development Grant. Uh, we've had these in the past with uh, Affiliated Foods expansion, the MP Global expansion uh, years ago with the original Proteant and uh, Romans packing long before my time. So this is nothing new to the city of Norfolk. Uh, the proposal is the maximum grant amount is 500,000. Uh, so we're proposing to uh, put together an application uh, for $500,000 grant funds to the city of Norfolk. The city of Norfolk will turn around and loan these funds to uh, milk specialties to purchase the building. And uh, the total project is estimated at $10 million with the purchase and all the improvements that they need to make, uh, $500,000 for general administration. Uh, basically, uh, they're going to be kind of doing the same thing that Proteum was doing with the uh, milk products. Um, this job, I believe they're out there right now. I think when we had the uh, unfortunate propane fire that uh, we learned that there were some folks in there doing some things, and uh, they're in there. To, there's 24 jobs there right now with milk specialties. Uh, they're renting the facility and have, like I said, created 24 jobs already. Uh, with these grant dollars, uh, they will commit to creating another 15 and to meet the CDBG low to moderate income requirements, at least 51% of those 15 jobs will be made available to low to moderate income. <coughs> Just here to have the required public hearing. If anybody has any questions or wants to comment on the project, uh, we'll let them do that. So, like I said, once again, it's a, we're asking for a $505,000 grant. I should restate that. The 5000 of that will be for administration of the grant. We'll have to monitor the jobs, make sure that they create the jobs they set and monitor those over the period of the grant. And then the 500000 grant will be to the city. The city will turn around and loan those funds to the business to purchase. And uh, their plans are to purchase clothes uh, at the end of this month. So we're moving forward fairly quickly, and uh, so it's, it's a great thing. It's a great thing to have this plant back and running, especially on the, on the water sewer side of things. I know that that's a... Uh, pretty nice uh, load for the city of Norfolk. So, plus we're creating 30 some jobs. So, absolutely. Again, Tom, go ahead. Tom, is the uh, loan that we're making to them is that a repayable or forgivable? Uh, certain the standards first, are met? yes. Uh, the first $250,000 will be a forgivable, zero percent forgivable loan, provided the company uh, says what they they're going to do. And there's there'll be an MOU and a contract between the business, the city. Uh, in the state of Nebraska on those requirements. Uh, the second $250,000 will be a 0% interest loan. Any other questions for Tom? 
Anyone else in the audience that has any questions wants to come forward and speak? Okay, seeing none. Again, Tom, thanks. For all well, I like to say I'm not, not you know, I, I get You're not done come yet? up here and talk about CDBG, but this, this, all these projects have been a great partnership with the city, especially on the Prodient, you know, with the you know, uh, Dave Simonson's office, Elkhorn Valley Economic Development Council, the resource team, you know, have sat down for months with this company and, and talking about things. So I appreciate to get up here and talk about the CDBG, but uh, it's not our office all by ourselves doing everything. It's a, it's a partnership, and it takes a partnership to get these things done. So Agreed. Well, I, I but I'll take the credit. You <laughs> I, just like to, it well. I just like to say, Tom, that I've heard good things, too, about everybody working together now, and it looks like we're starting to pay off, so it looks like things are starting to move ahead. Yeah, it works well. It works well. Okay. Thank you. Okay, then I will cl close this public hearing and ask for consideration of resolution number 2010-3, approving the grant application as put forward by Mr. Higginbotham. Your Honor, I would move approval of resolution 2010-3. Second. There is a motion with a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, I would ask you to please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative resolution 2010-3 is adopted. Okay. Going to the regular agenda then, consideration of ordinance number 5104 amending session, section 3-5 of the official city code to allow for the sale of beer and wine for consumption on the premise to begin at 11 a.m. on Sundays. Clint, I'm going to look to you to give us a little bit. Whoops, I'm sorry, a motion. Consider. Okay. Do I have a motion, please? I'll make a motion to consider uh, ordinance 5104, Second. Moved and seconded. I will look for discussion from you then, Clint. The uh, the ordinance really is uh, that's before you for consideration is in response to the January 15th letter uh, related to the state bowling uh, men's bowling tournament, which uh, and that letter's in your agenda packet. And in that letter, uh, they ask to. Uh, it, I'll just read this. Uh, they're requesting permission to serve alcohol starting at 11 a.m. on Sundays during tournament play only as our early shifts start at 8.30 and 10.30 a.m. Uh, the ordinance that you've got before you um, for consideration talks about not allowing, you, you can't do everything that they are asking you to do even if you want because the local option which is available under the statutes in Nebraska uh, preclude the council from permitting the sale of alcoholic liquor on Sundays before 12 o'clock. You can permit the sale of beer and wine before it, so as to allow it any time after 6 o'clock on Sunday morning. So the ordinance that we have here um, in trying to put something before you that would go as far as you can go in, in honoring that request would allow for the sale of beer and wine to start instead of at noon on Sundays, it could start at 11 o'clock if the ordinance were approved. Okay. I don't know if that makes sense or not. You're asking for one hour earlier is what That's we're looking what it is, at. But, but no. it only can apply to the beer and wine. Only beer and wine. Okay. <clears throat> Any questions? Carter, do you want to come up and speak to this at all? Um, I can. You sure are welcome to, and I would ask you to introduce yourself, state your name, and... Okay, I'm Carter Olson. I'm the general manager of King's. I've been there for a little over two years now, and we were fortunate enough to win the bid on the men's state bowling tournament this year. Um, I had to, to uh, try to acquire that bid about a year and a half ago, so we've been very fortunate in... in, in being awarded this this tournament, we're expected to bring about 2,000 people to Norfolk, and for most of these bowlers, they will be staying overnight on Saturday nights, um, visiting Norfolk restaurants. Um, we've really been working in conjunction with the Visitors, Visitors Bureau to uh, try to put some packets together for some some coupons and things for these bowlers to to really get out and get in the community a little bit. Um, my my whole goal here is to put on the best state tournament that I personally have ever been to. And for me, 
it, that, that goes down to details for me to be, be honest with you. When you walk in, the center's clean, everybody's really polite. Hey, they're doing something that other tournaments have not been able to do. And if all goes well, we bid on the women's tournament, which is even bigger. And we'll have a chance at that in a couple years here. So uh, I believe 2012 will be our opportunity to host that. And we're going to make a strong push to host that alone. So this is just, you know, that's all down the road. But this is the precursor to try and try and put on a great tournament. So if, I, if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to, to answer them. And Carter, this, this lasts for numerous weeks, <clears throat> doesn't it? Yes. It begins February 20th of this month, and it'll go out down. The last tournament date is the 20... 3rd of April. Um, it does the state tournament does not bowl on Easter weekend. Um, so if on the letter that I sent you that weekend was not included in my request, um, the other weekend that I did have included in there was May 1st and 2nd, which is a snow date. If we would happen to get you know snowed out, one day gets snowed out, they'll cancel both days because most of those guys, like I said, are here for the entire weekend. Any other questions? Okay, I'm going to look at you, Clint, and say, are, are what we're considering here an ordinance for only those specific dates? Or is this going to be an ordinance that's in effect from here on forward? This ordinance, if enacted, would be in effect for everyone, every Sunday. Right. Until or unless you changed it. Okay. Okay, so that So it's not just for the bowling alley and not just on those right. specific dates. <laughs> So until it would come back to us, it would be 11 a.m. any Sunday morning. Correct. Should it be enacted. Okay. Appreciate the clarification. Any other questions or comments or concerns or? Hart, thank you for being here. The I have a question for you. That, yes. And you have to excuse me if I'm not understanding. The shifts that you're talking about, that's when they start bowling then, 8.30 and 10.30? The first shift is, is Sunday mornings at 8.00. Um, I really didn't feel like that was appropriate to really start that early or even re or and therefore request that early. Um, I felt like if the 1030 shift starts, those guys get started. We can start it a little bit early. Guys are coming in at that time for the next shift. That was my, my reason for requesting 11 instead of any earlier. I didn't think any earlier would really be appropriate. So. And that also means then that the 8th, 30 shift is done by 10:30. The eight will be done. Yeah, the eight correct. Is yes, because this next shift will then start at 10:30. So. Any other questions or discussion? The only thing I would say is, is if if we are willing to help Carter, and somebody does have a problem with it, we can, like they said, resend this when his bowling term is over. So it gives us a way out. Um, I have no problem with helping him out, and but if somebody does for the rest of the Sunday mornings, we can talk about that in May. You know. Okay. The All other right. question that I had then also, and I don't know because I don't go to those tournaments. Is, is I mean, is the availability of the alcoholic beverages normally available at those early of hours at at other cities that have hosted it? Um, I can't I can't answer that definitively because I don't recall personally whether they were or not. Now I, I would say that the majority they probably weren't. Um, I know some just haven't even attempted. Um, but I, I don't I can't answer that definitively if if they were or not. So I don't normally. <laughs> we usually just Sundays we, we, we don't drink a whole lot my team and we just go home but I know a lot of teams, you know, the guys, you know, one or two, and then they're on their way, so. Okay. Thank you, Carter. Thank you. Any other discussion? Okay. If not, what do I need here, Beth? Short title. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska, to amend Section 3-5 of the Official City Code to allow for the sale of beer and wine for consumption on the premises to begin at 11 a.m. on Sundays, to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect, and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. All right. Are we ready to call the question then? Please vote. 
Voting in favor of the ordinance, Councilpersons Coy, Reeder, Wilson, Brenneman, Faust, Saunders, voting against the ordinance. Councilperson Lange, ordinance 40, 5104 carries in first reading. Okay. Do we need to, I suppose we could February meet it to, 20th. would we need to go a little faster, Carter? Would you like us to, to vote on it again tonight? So you do you have pamphlets and stuff you need to advertise it or or can you wait till the middle of the month when we have our next meeting? Um, if, if that would be better, I mean we can wait. Okay. First day is going to be the twenty first of February. The first Sunday will be. Okay. I'm willing to suspend the rules and pass on second third if the council doesn't mind. Second. Okay, there's a motion on the floor to suspend the second and third reading. Do I have a second? I did have a second. Yeah. If you will please vote. <coughs> Voting in favor of the uh, motion to suspend the rules, Councilpersons Coy, Reeder, Wilson, Brenneman, Files, Saunders. Voting against the motion, Councilman Lange. Motion carries. Ordinance 51, Ordinance 5104 carries in second and third reading. Okay. Next would be consideration of the City of Norfolk joining the Nebraska Expressways for Economic Development. I'll make, do you need a motion, Your Honor? Uh, I bet I do. I will make that motion. <laughs> I appreciate that. Second. <laughs> and we'll have some discussion. Um, looking for explanation. Dennis? Uh, this is a coalition of communities across the state that uh, are uh, working together to uh, get the expressway system that was laid out in about uh, 1988 uh, funded and improved across the state. Uh, City, it's a coalition of communities that uh, the funding is based on about five cents per capita per month. It'll be a total of uh, roughly fourteen thousand dollars a year for the city of Norfolk. So, uh, I think West Point's the one that uh, encouraged Norfolk to participate. Any discussion on this? And that uh, for that fourteen thousand dollars, it's uh, for uh, uh, lobbying and stuff. Is that? I would imagine that that's one of their larger expenses is lobbying expenses. Uh, <coughs> and, uh, like I said, they're working on uh, all the expressways that were a part of that uh, original 1988 right. plan. So it's not just Highway 275 or Highway 81 or 30 or any of the others that may have been there. It's the coalition across the state that's trying to work together to find a mechanism to get them all completed. Okay. This is basically just a membership fee, so, right? Mm -hmm. More or less. Yeah. Okay. Any any other discussion? If not, when I, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Jim. Okay, I should have jumped in quicker. No, nope, that's all right. Um, you know, and, and I realize, you know, that it, that it's a, uh, you know, uh, expense that we're going to incur that way, but I don't know how we can go to the podium and preach that we're in favor of 275 being completed to Norfolk in whatever time period is, or or any of the other um, roads coming in and out of this area if, if we're not willing to to basically put our money where our mouth is at. So I, you know, even though it, it, it is some funds and it's funds in economically stressed times I think we still need to look at the big picture and see that this is further down the road so okay there is a motion in a second are we ready to vote <coughs> please do so all council persons voting in the affirmative all right next I need a motion for consideration of approval of a real estate purchase agreement between the city and the Norfolk Area Chamber of Commerce providing for the Chamber's purchase of abandoned railroad property located at the southeast corner of 7th Street and Norfolk Avenue. So moved, Your Honor. Second. Your Honor, at this time I would like to declare a conflict of interest on these remaining items in regard to this and will be leaving my position if you would recall me when the discussion and the vote is completed. We will yell. Thank Thanks, you. Jim. Okay, there's a motion and a second. Uh, Clint, do you want to fill us in? Um, 
the uh, the purchase agreement, uh, the the two items that are here, the purchase agreement and the uh, and the accompanying ordinance. Uh, the purchase agreement provides for the sale of the property uh, for the total amount of twenty three thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars and sixty seven cents, and involves the reservation of some easements, uh, most notably in regard to a water line that's on the property, and uh, and that's that's what the agreement the agreement does as to the. Uh, as to the ordinance, can I address that at the same you time? You certainly can. If the ordinance is passed uh, in order to comply with the formalities involving the sale of property by the city, um, uh, following enactment of the ordinance, there would be publication of that ordinance for, uh, I think it's three times in the uh, in, in 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 the newspaper, uh, and then 30 days has to go by, and uh, and during which, if anybody's troubled by that, they can. Do remonstrance against it, and then only after that two months time period takes takes uh, has occurred without any remonstrance occurring, can we actually consummate the sale? So, if you approve this tonight, it'll be uh, uh, you know minimum of 60 days, and then we do the stuff with the title insurance and all that good stuff to <coughs> get the matter complete. And answer any questions that you'd have. Any questions by any of the council? Uh, how did the how did the price of 23,000 come up? Dennis is probably is that per square foot of what they paid for the other property. Uh, we price that property similarly to what we have done with many other tracts of property that the city has had for sale. We go and look at what the county has for the assessed value of the properties adjacent there too. So what we were looking at was the assessed value of the old Kentucky Fried Chicken site, and we take just the land portion of that. So that was what we used as a base, and then we discounted that price to reflect the easements that Clint identified that we would be retaining, um, withholding as we transferred that property. So that's how we arrived at the $23,000. And and the reason that you utilize the uh, uh, the adjoining property is that because the property uh, is owned by the city, there is no assessed valuation on it. So it's not that the assessed valuation is zero, it just hasn't been assessed. So uh, the notion would be that, that uh, for instance, in this instance, uh, even though this is corner property, I think it was, a set, was, was done at the value of the adjoining property, uh, there could be an argument made that the, you know, so it's on the low side of reasonable at, at best, I think, in the, in the manner in which we've done it, taking into account that the, uh, that the assessor is targeting something in the low 90 percent for commercial properties or or whatever so um, that's kind of how we got there if my question was just if in the best interest of you know working in a partnership with the chamber and everything uh, it's a piece of land that we really can not, not do much with anyways that uh, what's it hurt just to give it to him or sell it to him for a dollar Well, this property would have some function as parking in a downtown parking area where there is no requirements for uh, on-street parking uh, for each individual business. Uh, we did uh, annex this a couple of years ago into the vehicle parking district, so it's a part of that district. That would be one potential use that the city would have for, for this property. And then there's some issues related to um, state statutes that require that the uh, public gets fair value for the property that they are divesting themselves of. There there are so are some things and, and some case law and the like that precludes you from making a donation to the chamber. Gotcha. Uh, so a, and one of the other things that is that is also there is uh, this is also consistent with uh, the mechanism that's been utilized and the, the, the valuation mechanism that's been utilized in in recent years in regard to the to the railroad right of way uh, as it's been uh, transferred and you know in many instances I would say in an almost in an economic development uh, uh, assistance because you've allowed existing businesses to buy adjoining property that you know expand their property and so on and so forth so it's also consistent with that. You know, as Clint said, you know, we looked at this and tried to figure out how we could get to the lowest reasonable number in light of the of the court cases and the state statutes and things. So, okay, thank you. 
I think this will be good for the chamber and for Norfolk when they get done doing what they're going to uh, unveil here. It's going to be special, and, and it'll be uh, it'll be well worth it to to join and get that done. So, and we do have a letter from the chamber that yeah. that uh, they're agreeable with the uh, price. Um, price and the agreement. Okay. Any other discussion or questions? Hearing none, and there is a motion with a second to approve the real estate purchase agreement between the city and the Norfolk Area <coughs> Chamber. If you will please vote. All council persons voting in the affirmative. Councilman Lange abstaining and Councilman Van Dyke absent. Motion carries. And next would be consideration of approval of ordinance number 5105, providing for the sale of abandoned railroad property located at the southeast corner of 7th Street and Norfolk Avenue to Norfolk Area Chamber of Commerce. Your Honor, I would introduce ordinance number 5105, first Second. reading. Motion with a second. <coughs> Any discussion? I think it's been pretty well explained. Ready for a short title? Mm -hmm. An ordinance of the City of Norfolk, Nebraska to authorize the sale of city property to provide the terms of sale and authorize the mayor to execute and deliver a quick claim deed to the property to provide for a remonstrance to said sale as provided by law to provide when this ordinance shall be in full force and effect and to provide for publication of this ordinance in pamphlet form. I would ask you to please vote. You want to turn him? <laughs> All council persons voting in the affirmative. Councilman Lange abstaining. Councilman Van Dyke absent. Ordinance 5105 carries <coughs> the first reading. <coughs> Next under reports, I'm looking at balance sheet. Anything that you want to go over for us, Randy? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. We can't pass on a third the land contract, right? Right. I, I, I think we probably. I'm. Or second. I'm. You can. Right. Oh, we can. We can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just needs process. All right. I'll make the motion uh, to pass ordinance 5105 on second and third. Second. Motion and a second to pass ordinance number 510. I'm sorry, motion to suspend. Sorry. Um, right. Second and third readings. If you will please vote. Voting, all council persons voting in the affirmative to suspend the rules and adopt ordinance 5105 on second and third reading. Councilperson Lange abstaining, Councilman Van Dyke absent. Okay. All right. Everything's kosher. My fault. I thought too we were might have that. No, so, yeah, so. anything else? If not, I would ask for a motion to adjourn. I'll make the motion, Your Honor. We are adjourned. Thanks, everyone. You did. Can you get it? Yes. I have to do everything with my right hand. Left hand. Or my right hand. So, um.